Hi, uh, my name is William Pittenger uh, from Wichita Falls, Texas, um, and I'm here to read another selection of the Constitution, uh, the Constitution of the United States. It's key. It's only keepers to people, as written by George, as said by George Washington. Um, I'm reading uh, out of Article Five. which I have highlighted and by the way I also sent two copies one in 2008 and one in 2010 highlighted to President Obama uh, so uh, okay now here it is article 5 <clears throat> the Congress whenever two-thirds of both houses shall deem it necessary shall propose amendments to this Constitution or on the application of legislatures of two-thirds of the several states shall call a convention for proposing amendments which in either case shall be valid to all intents and purposes as part of this constitution when ratified by the legislatures of three-fourths of the several states or by conventions in three-fourths thereof as the one or other mode of ratification may be proposed by the Congress provided that no amendment which may be made prior to the year 1808 shall in any manner affect the first and fourth clauses in the ninth section of the first article and that no state without its consent shall be deprived of its equal suffrage in the Senate. Let's briefly discuss the, uh, the three branches of our federal government. Uh, we have the president, then we have Congress, which is broken into two houses, the House of Representatives, uh, which represent the different districts in their state, and then you have two senators per state in the Senate. Um, and then you have the Supreme Court. Uh, the, the president traditionally has been has been a specialist in the area of foreign affairs uh, and his primary job as we have read before uh, in article 2 is to uphold the Constitution and ensure that the laws of the under the Constitution uh, are properly executed. Uh, he does not have anything to do with passing laws. Article 1, Section 8, uh, as I remind you, there is no mention of the President when it comes to making law. That is all on the House and the Senate. Now, uh, when money is concerned, the House of Representatives, a bill must, must originate from the House of Representatives when money is concerned, because that is where uh, the uh, Appropriations Committee is located, and they have the power of the purse. When it is not concerning money, then it may originate from either house. Um, and uh, in whichever case that it may be, it is, uh, it is brought up, voted on, passed in one house, it moves to the other house, voted on, passed, and then sent on to the president, and the president will look at it and he will say, okay, well this needs to have this in it, and this needs to have that in it, and... Uh, if it doesn't have these things in it, then I'm going to veto it. Or he's going to say, I don't accept his bill at all. And he'll veto it. Or, on the other hand, he'll accept it and he'll sign it. Now, there is another provision. If the president does not sign that bill within 10 days, or he doesn't look at it, or he doesn't get with anybody about it, his silence is actually approval for the bill. And so, uh, 
so that goes back to uh, the Senate then at that point to vote on and then two-thirds of the Senate may pass that at that point the Supreme Court then uh, they are in consultation with uh, all uh, with the uh, with the other two branches the legislative bl uh, branch and uh, the White House now the Supreme Court is the judicial branch and what they do is they look at laws and they determine constitutionality from the laws under the 14th Amendment or under the Constitution itself and they have to take into consideration also forefathers intent um, and uh, they either deem a bill constitutional or unconstitutional and they say okay it'll be constitutional if this provision isn't in here um, or it's not constitutional because this is in here okay um, and they send it back to uh, whoever originated the bill they make the uh, they make the appropriate adjustments and it's reviewed again and then they bring it to the house um, and uh, or the Senate and they say okay let's let's vote on this and if and again if it's passed in both houses and it moves on to the president where the president signs it um, now article 5 was created specifically for the purposes of breaking a deadlock on the federal government originally there had to be uh, anonymous consent of the states um, and Virginia was particularly notorious for uh, for voting no to any additional amendments um, and so article 5 was created so that instead of just one state holding all the cookies uh, then the House and the Senate would be able to have some power over that by saying okay two-thirds of a vote will make this bill pass and even so today we are experiencing a deadlock in Congress between the President and Congress and the Supreme Court unconstitutionally by the way so if they are both if all three are in a deadlock and they can't agree to anything then that brings in the states now the states at that point can 34 of them can say okay we have uh, we have a proposed amendment or we want to vote on the amendment that has not been added because we believe it should be in there then three-quarters of the states at that point can vote on it and pass it as a part of the Constitution um, in the event that they want to submit uh, a a, pro, uh, a proposed amendment now this is one at a time this isn't rewriting the Constitution or anything this is one amendment at a time um, uh, two-thirds of the states or 34 of them can propose amendments uh, and uh, and then once 34 uh, states have proposed a, a particular amendment then Congress has to make room for what has originally been called a constitutional convention it's not a constitutional convention it's an amendment convention so uh, so that's article 5 if at that point two-thirds uh, bring this amendment up an amendment convention is uh, is held and the states vote to add this proposed amendment then there is some time given for those states to ratify and once the states have ratified the proposed amendment it is bona fide part of the Constitution uh, and this is 
how Article 5 can be used to break a deadlock in Congress. Uh, the other way that Article 5 could be used is when a state wants to file suit against the President or Congress or the Supreme Court. Um, and if one state goes ahead and they have the evidence and, uh, and they are able to provide uh, the evidence for a case, uh, then other states may join in. Um, and uh, Texas is now suing the President of the United States. They began the charge. 16 other states to date have joined the state of Texas in suing the President for this uh, immigration law or this immigration executive order. Uh, and uh, that's it. It's William Pittenger from Wichita Falls. Thank you very much.